Whew. Oh my god, you know. Before I start this review, I want to do a little discussion with you people. There's a term that was coined by someone on YouTube, anime person on YouTube, who, uh, which I would like to reference right now. That term is known as the void. Do you people know what the void is? Well, some of you, some of you may, but in, just in case you don't, I'm going to tell you exactly what the void is. The void is a term used when you finished such an anime where the ending, not a bad ending mind you, but the ending just left you gazing at your computer screen for several minutes completely speechless. As if a little part of you died on the inside when you, fi when you finished it. Very few anime have made me feel like this. As much anime as I love, very few have made me feel like this. Code Geass did, Death Note did, Fate Stay Night did, Shin Sekai Yori did, and the anime we're talking about today did. That anime, of course, is Fate Zero. Yeah. We're finally doing it. Now, just to give you a perspective on how quickly I finished it, when I watched Fate Stay Night, I finished it in two days. Uh, for ten episodes in one day, and then yesterday when I finished it, I completed the rest of it. I started Fate Zero almost immediately. I did six episodes yesterday. Then today, I watched the last, the rest of the episodes. The rest of the 19 fucking episodes in the morning. Okay. That being said, let's get into this goddamn review. It was directed by A. Aoki and produced by Atsuhiro Iwakami and written by, uh... Akira Hiyama and uh, and Akihiro Yoshida. Oh, they even left. Not sure where they went. I know my mom has off work today, so I'm not sure where they went. Alright, sorry, I'm probably gonna cut that part out there. I didn't. Someone walked upstairs. I didn't realize it was gonna take that long. Anyways, though, I mean, the music's by Yuki Ka Kajiura and it's by Studio Ufo Table. And it originally ran from October 1st, 2011 to December 24th, 2011, with a total of 13 episodes in the end. But wait, there was actually a season two. The first season was just 13 episodes. Um. And the second season was ran from April 7, 2012 to June 23, 2012, a total of 12 episodes in the end. Um, and the light novel that it was based off of was actually written by Gen Robucci. And from what I heard, I think that he actually had a pretty big role in the making of this anime. Although I could be wrong about that, but it definitely feels like one of the best Robucci animes, though. So, all in all, it was a total of 25 episodes. Okay. So what was Fate Stay Night about? Well, first off, if you watch Fate Zero first, like I did, you'll notice that there are a lot of ret a lot of ways that Fate Zero really kind of retcons Fate Stay Night, which I will talk about in this review. Um, even though I heard it was supposed to take place ten years prior to Fate Stay Night, which it kind of does, but it makes me wonder if they made this kind of meaning to bash on the original Fate Stay Night and disregard it completely. Which would make sense since Fate's, the new Fate Stay Night anime is coming out later this year, which I think is supposed to be like a remake of um, the original Fate Stay Night, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> by UFO Table, by the way. But anyways, I'll talk about the retcons later on. Basically, this takes place at the during the uh, Holy Grail War, ten years prior to the start of the original, or ten years prior to the original series. In which, in, in which uh, Saber is summoned up by uh, Kiri, Kiritsugu Emiya, who was Shiro Emiya's father, actually. Or adoptive father, whatever. And Saber is his servant in this one. 
Okay, and basically it's just a simple fight for the Holy Grail, but it's not really all that simple after all because there's lots of action and there's lots of fucking drama and tragedy. Okay, when I went into this series, I thought it was just going to be a simple fight for the Holy Grail. Seven masters and seven servants killing each other for the Holy Grail. That's seriously what I thought it was going to be because in Fate's Day Night, for the most part, that's kind of what it was. And that's kind of what I expected here, but I got so much more and I was so fucking pleased. Okay, there are so many different type, different like subplots in Fate Zero that it really keeps you hooked. There's not too many to where it seems like it's kind of overload for a 25 episode series. But there's just enough to where, you know, you don't feel bored that it's sticking to just one plot. And you don't feel it's too simplistic either. Because the plot is, in Fate Zero is very complex. Um, and, and whatnot. You know, it's not really as simple as you might think. There's all sorts of subplots such as Kiritsugu and his really hidden agenda, which is... Due to tragic events from his childhood, he feels the need to basically play God and save the world. And that's kind of why he wants the Holy Grail. But he's willing to go through to so many... Ex he's willing to go so far to do this. He's willing to murder thousands of people in cold blood for this. Basically believing in the age-old philosophy that the needs of the many outweighs the needs of the few. Alright, he's killed so many people. In fact, when we get a glimpse into his past, it's revealed that he actually killed his own father in cold blood because of the cruel experiments that he was doing. Okay, so there's lots to this character. Really, there were very few characters that I didn't like in Fate Zero. Unlike Fate Stay Night, in which the only character I didn't like was Shiro, there actually were characters here that I didn't like. Uh, I don't remember his name, but I didn't... Oh, wait, I think it was, like, Zoka or something? Hold on a sec here. Let me try to find for the character page. Find it. He was in the, Mot the, head, the head of the, Mot the Mato family. Uh, I think it was, like, Zota Ma... Or Z Zota? Um... Huh. Zokin Mato. Zokin Mato is basically this old geezer. He looks old. He looks older than fucking dirt, but he was—he's the head of the Mod, was the head of the Mato family in this series, and he and I didn't like him at all because he basically forced Sakura, the um, Sakura Tosaka of the Tosaka family, to come and live with him, and and, and basically to to be bred to become the new heir to the Mato family, essentially. Due to the, I guess the connections that the Mato family and the Tosaka family have with each other, and just the cruel things that he did to that fucking girl. Like, I hate kids, but I cringed when I saw what he did to that girl. Oh my fucking god! And I also hate the uh, Tosaka father as well because he just let it fucking happen. <laughs> Seriously, both of them are despicable pieces of garbage. And I'm so glad that they both ended up dead, too. Like, when fucking, uh... Kiri... When, uh, Kotomine ended up killing... the Tosaka father, oh, that was enjoyable. And at the end of the series there, when Sakura actually showed her dark side and threw her grandfather in the fucking pit where she was at for an entire fucking year, that was awesome. Sakura showed her dark side there when she was finally freed from her grandfather's control. And she didn't show any... I mean, some some people might hate on that because she didn't show any sign of being like that at all up to this point. But I didn't care. It was still so fucking awesome, okay? Like, it really was. God damn it. <clears throat> Anyways, though. So basically, both of them got what they deserved. Okay. Other than that, I really don't think there were any other characters that I truly hated. Like, there were characters I didn't like too much, like, um... Uh, what was that servant? Ryder. 
who's in his time he was known as the king of conquerors famous in history as alexander the great who desires to defeat saver in particular because he believes her ideals regarding kingship are delusional and that she she would thrive as one who one of his followers and that's actually another really interesting subplot because we find because, you know, they basically have two completely different ideals of what a king should be like. And he, and because what Saber wants to do is basically acquire the Holy Grail so that she can basically redo her past because of the, what she believes the sins she committed during her past. Not being able to protect her people, not being able to serve her people. And he believes that's bullshit, basically. However, we kind of learned that there is some meaning to what she believed in, because at the very end, we actually get to see her have a conversation with Sir Lancelot of the Round Table, and he basically explains that, you know, he, although he did want to be killed by her blade due to, he, due to all the sins he committed and her refusing it, that he and all the other members of the Round Table thought that she was the greatest king ever. So that kind of proves that, you know, she wasn't completely wrong in her belief of what a good king is. I'm not saying that Ryder was in particular, because really everyone has different beliefs on what a king should be like. Okay, I'd explain mine, but that would kind of derail the review here, so let's just move on. You know, and there were lots of different subplots which really kept me interested, and I loved every single one of them, and the characters really helped out with that. Again, there were... The two characters I mentioned before were the really only two characters I hated. You know, I mean, I didn't like, I, I didn't love Ryder because of how he treated Saber, but, I mean, you couldn't really blame him because both of them came from completely different upbringings and different parts of the world. And both of them were, the, both the two of them were completely different types of kings. Okay. So, yes, it's very, it, but it's still very interesting. All these characters, especially Saber. Oh, very good. Saber. One of my favorite anime characters now, definitely. Saber, will you marry me? <laughs> Seriously? Saber is so fucking awesome. <laughs> I, words cannot des describe how much I love this fucking character. Okay. She's amazing. Like, she's so badass, she takes care of enemies so easily, usually. Plus, that giant, that her, her sword, most powerful weapon, Excalibur, and the way she swings it down to fucking kill her strongest opponents. First off, like, this, I think, looks much cooler, but was that anyone else besides me getting Bleach vibes there when she was, in terms of Getsu Got Tensho when she did that? I'm not trying to compare the series to Bleach. The series is much better, much better than Bleach. I'm just saying... I, I, I kind of got a flashback to that, but this looks much cooler and is much more badass in my opinion, though. Alright, so... God damn it. There So, yes. Anyways, that's it for the um, plot and characters, though. Which, except for those two characters I mentioned before, were all fantastic. Okay. Anyways, though. Now let's talk about the art and animation. The art was great. I love the way this series looked. A lot more than in Space Day Night. And the animation... Uh, the animation in this fucking series is near perfect. This is some of the best, most fluid animation I've ever fucking seen in an anime Period. Now mind you, this is the first UFO table anime I've ever seen. If this is their standard, then... God damn. I gotta watch more. Be and Because this animation was so fucking... Incredible. <sighs> oh my god. And also, now let's get to the music. The music is really fucking good too. It's amazing. So catchy. So, you know, upbeat when it needs to be. So sad when it needs to be. So act so so action packed to get you pumped up when it needs to. It all fits just perfectly and it's all awesome. Okay. Whew. 
And of course, both of the openings and both of the endings were fucking awesome as well. Just have to get that out of out, out of the way there. Now, let's get to the retcons. Now, this is the reason why I don't know if this series was meant to mock the original Fate Stay Night or not, because there was a lot of retcons here. Okay. A lot of retcons. What do I mean by that? Well, first off, um... That Eisen, that young, I forget her name, keep forgetting her name, but that young Eisenburn girl, basically in Fate Zero, she's revealed to be the daughter of uh, Kiritsugu, Emiya. Okay, in Fate Stay Night, she, she's actually a master. She's the master of the uh, servant berserker. However, in here, she ends up being killed by her father. So, what? <sighs> How does that make any fucking sense? That I call that a ret I call retcon right fucking there, okay. Um also it's revealed that in here that Sakura and Rin Tosaka were both actually blood sisters. If you remember, you know, Rin Tosaka was a very major character in Fate Stay Night and Sakura which we, I don't think we ever learned her last name in Fate Stay Night, but Sakura was a character there who was there occasionally. occasionally. I kind of liked her character myself. Okay. And, yeah. However, in here we learn that they're actually sisters. Now, was this ever referenced at all in Fate Stay Night? In fact, did those two characters really care for each other at all, either way, love or hate, in Fate Stay Night? I don't think so. I don't think this was referenced at all in Fate Stay Night. You know, which is kind of weird, and I call fucking retcon right there, okay? So yes, I'm sorry, I just have to call retcon there, because, you know, that should have been, if it's not a retcon, then it should have been explained better, okay? And also there were some, um, servants that weren't exactly the same in each one. For example, Berserker wa is a lot different in each one. And actually, in Fate... If you remember who uh, Archer was in Fate Stay Night, Archer, although Gilgamesh is still called Gilgamesh most of the time, in Fate Zero, he's also referred to as Archer. So it's really weird how that works out. There's a lot of retcons here, and it makes me wonder if it was actually on purpose to basically bash on the uh, original Fate Stay Night. It's kind of funny if it is, even though I love the, ser love the series, okay? <clears throat> Anyways, though, my final verdict, Fate Stay Night is fucking amazing. I seriously loved every single moment of this fucking series, and I highly recommend it. For everyone, okay? It's not something that you should miss. Period. Really. Like, there were some issues I had with it that I mentioned, but for the most part, it was phenomenal. It's one of my favorite anime now already, and I just finished it, like, not even two hours ago. I actually don't even think it was an hour and a half ago, maybe pretty close to it. Anyways, though, it's amazing, I, and I definitely think that you should watch it. So, yes. But anyways, overall, I hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Also, I can't wait for the new Fates Day Night anime coming out this fall. Too bad I have to wait so fucking long. Anyways, overall, I hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.